Do you remember what it was like when you first came to the Lord Jesus Christ, when you received him as your Savior and that, that love that you experienced? I remember very distinctly coming under conviction for my sin and feeling that weight and, and then the, 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 the hopelessness that I was sitting in a revival service, of course, and uh, then when I heard that Jesus was the only Savior, the sufficient Savior, when I trusted him as my Savior, changed my life. And one of the aspects of that change is realizing his great love for me and being able to express my love to him. And it was very emotional, very emotional. And the days following that and the years following that, that, that love for the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um, well, in Revelation chapter 2, um, John is writing and he says this. In Revelation chapter 2, starting with verse 1, he says, Unto the angel of the church of Ephesus write, These things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil. Thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not, and hast found them liars, and hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee because thou hast left thy first love. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen and repent and do the first works or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of its place except thou repent. I was thinking of uh, this passage and uh, about our first love. And we have this mentioned here about the fact that we can lose our first love. That's what, that's what God says here, because he says unto the angel of the church of Ephesus, right? And that's Jesus. He's talking to the church, sending this message uh, through John. He says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. When you look at this passage, it's an interesting passage, because we think of somebody that loses their first love, must be a slacker, don't care, Maybe they're filled with um, hatred or, or they've turned and they've had um, circumstances in their life that they don't like and they walk away. But that's not, what, that's not what the word says here. As a matter of fact, if you read it, as we read the passage, you'll see that it was a, a pretty interesting church, a dynamic church. And see, they were, uh, the people in this church, they were doing a lot of good. They were serving. They were busy about God's work. They were careful with God's word. They checked out uh, what people were preaching and teaching. They checked these men out and, and they uh, had no, no problem to uh, identify a false teacher and false doctrine. They were not lazy. Yet Jesus said they had a problem. And what that problem was, was not necessarily evident to them because as on the outside, the, the, their appearance was as they looked right. They sounded right. And uh, they would react right. And so that's always good things. But, but Jesus said, nevertheless, I have somewhat against you. They had this problem. And that problem was is they had left their first love. And when you think about that, um, well, they had the place of preeminence that Christ had in their life was no longer there. Now that doesn't mean that they abandoned the gospel because a lot of times what we do is we have a tendency to think in extremes. We think, well, if, if, if he's not their first love, they probably don't even talk about him in the service or he doesn't have any place in their life. No, what, what Jesus was essentially saying is they left their first love and he no longer had the preeminence in their life. See, he was not denied. He was not thrown out. He was simply not their first love anymore. 
That's what Jesus says. Now, here's what it is. As we live our lives and serve the Lord Jesus Christ, I think it's good to ask ourselves the same question. It's good for me to ask Dave, is it possible that I have left my first love? Is it possible? Remember, it's, it's not hating the Lord. It's not denying the Lord. Does he have the preeminence in my life? Or let's put it this way. Because a lot of times we think preeminence, preeminence. Am I as captivated with his love right now for me? Am I as captivated for his love for me as I was when I first came to Christ? And so what we need to realize this is a, a, a commentary said this about it. Is when we read the, the phrase in verse 4 where he says, um, um, I'm looking here for the word. For his name, or verse 3, for my name's sake. And his commentary said this, For the sake of Christ's name, they had endured trial and adversity with patience and had labored tirelessly. But the tragedy of Ephesus was that it had left its first love. The fire of its affection had died down. The glowing enthusiasm of its early days had disappeared the Christians could look back to better days when their bridal love for Christ flowed warm, full, and free. They were still sound in doctrine and active in service, but the true motive of all worship and service was missing. And so John, he writes and he says that they were to remember from where they had fallen and to repent. See, the remembering and the repenting is, is supposed to take place in what were they supposed to remember? Well, as this commentary said, that first love. I remember John R. Rice writing a, a song that we used to sing in college. Um, and I think he called it the backslider song. I don't have a copy of it in front of me, but it starts off, I remember the time when I first knew the Savior. When the sunlight of blessing so flooded my heart. Oh, the, oh, the first thrill of first love with Jesus my Savior. Those are the opening lines of that song. And as I rehearse them in my mind, I think of exactly that's what happened to me when I, would, when I first trusted Christ as my Savior. Just the thought of it was just incredible. You know, we think about first love, and I remember um, dating my girlfriend, who's now my wife of almost 45 years, and I can remember being on the block crew as a young man in my uh, late teens, and they said, oh, Davey's in love, and I was in love. And I can remember taking, and we were, uh, I was a, a laborer, so I was carrying buckets of cement, and every time if you didn't wash the bucket out, it stuck and it was miserable. So we had a 55-gallon drum, and we called it the, the, the water barrel, and you had to rinse the bucket out and I can remember and I can remember this like it was yesterday I'm standing there and a bunch of these uh, uh, Masons that were my personal friends they were teasing me this oh Davy's in love Davy's in love and I have to admit I, I almost blush even talking about it now because it is so tender and I can remember as a uh, as a teenager I didn't want to be told that but yet I had come to that confidence that yes Karen was going to be my wife and I was going to ask her to marry me. And I, and I looked at him and I said, yeah, I'm in love. And you know, they couldn't tease me anymore because it was just so wonderful. A, a, a day of work, realizing the love that I had for this girl that was going to be my bride was a, a day where the, the circumstances of the day didn't carry the weight in my life anymore. And it was like, wow. And you know what? I think of my first love with my Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. How I realized that I was lost, as I said in my opening. And I came to him and trusted him and, and experienced this wonderful love that he had for me. Well, what John is saying here is that they should remember the good days of their early faith and repent of their diminishing of first love. And I'm reading what this commentary said about it. And repeat, and repeat the devoted service which characterized the outset of their Christian life. Otherwise, he would remove the lampstand at Ephesus. That is, the assembly would cease to exist. Its testimony would die out. You know, we're awful concerned about the church, and we hear, 
we hear all kinds of people saying, oh, our church is dying and, and uh, our, our love for Christ is dying out. And, and you know what? Here's the thing is that we need to check our hearts and make sure that we are not losing our first love because that's when our testimonies begin to diminish. That's what happens. Now, as we continue with this thought about our first love and a possibility of losing our first love, we need to remember that to be a Christian is to love the Lord Jesus Christ. This is an echo of what John recorded in his gospel in John chapter 17 and verse 3. And I mentioned this in sermons just recently. And this is life eternal, that they may know thee, the only true God in Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. 1 John 4, 19 in John's first epistle, not his gospel, he says this, we love him because he first loved us. Paul goes on and he said in Romans chapter 5 and verse 5, and hope maketh not a shame because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost which is given unto us. I cannot manufacture a love for the Lord Jesus Christ. God says he gives it to me. He produces it in me by the Holy Spirit who comes and indwells in me. He opens my heart to receive his word. The Holy Spirit regenerates me and I love because he first loved me. I want to ask you this question. Do you have a love for the Lord Jesus Christ? Do I have a love for the Lord Jesus Christ? Is that love displayed by giving him the preeminence in my life? If anything, in our culture today and even on a global scale, attitudes of independence and self-worth abound in the name of Christ throughout the church. And I'm saying this to the demise of the church. I am never supposed to find my worth in myself. I find my worth in him. Because it is he who loved me. As I continue with these questions that I wrote down to challenge you, but also to challenge me, is do I long to join fellowship with other believers and praise his name? Church is not an activity. Church is an assembly of God's people to worship him. To take that private worship in our lives and to express it corporately and publicly. Do I long to hear God's word preached so I may better understand God's word in order to grow in this love, in my love, and to walk with him? Do I open God's word on my own and cry out to Jesus to help me glean these truths from his word to instruct me? that I might love him more. The alternatives are living our lives for ourselves, and that puts us in the place of preeminence. Remember, Revelation 2, 1 through 5, was written to admonish a very busy people who appeared as though they were committed to the Lord Jesus Christ. But God, who is the one who knows everyone's heart perfectly, declared they left their first love, and that first love was Jesus. As God sees our heart right in this very moment, what does he see? Where do you stand in your walk for Christ? Does he have the preeminence? If not, will you cry out to him right now? Well, let's pray. Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the, just the plainness of it all and how we have a tendency to confuse so many things. But yet, Lord, help us as we understand this passage. Lord, help us to see ourselves and that we might not have left our first love, but if we have, Father, challenge us to remember and repent.